رنگو رزینه ای رو چرخ شورش دوره دیگری نه لقاد این جیهان دنگ رزینه دستارا پروره تر یا هرود هرینه گد خالون نو کراش قادا هلدینه دستارا پروره تر یا هرود هرینه گد خالون نو کراش قادا هلدینه قادا هلدینه تو واش میره شدن قدن شندی دان سنبلا شادی دار به دنگ پارتیزان تو واشین نشان دن خدن جندی دار سنبلا شهیدان به دنگ پارتیزان بر مای هرکش ناف دلچیان رابون سری پیا جندا کردیستان پر بای هرکی جناب دلچیان را برون سر پیاش جنده کردستان جنده کردستان جناب دیوار زنده را حیا سرچیان هل دنارا سور بر خودان جیان ری رو نایی ری بتی یا خوینا شهیدان ری بره مای پارت یا کار کران ری رو نایی ری بتی یا خوینا شهیدان ری بره مای پارت یا کار کران پارت یا کار کران بیجی روش آقا Riji, Rojava. Riji, Rojava. Riji, Rojava. Second level. Rojava. Riji, Rojava. Riji, Rojava. Riji, Rojava. Riji, Rojava. Riji, Rojava. So we have gathered here today to demonstrate in solidarity. With Roja Vaya Kurdistan! We are here to show our support to our comrades in Northeast Syria fighting against the fascist Turkish state and their, and their backing of Islamist militias. We are here to protest the invasion onto sovereign land of Northeast Syria, the destruction of the autonomous administration of Northeast Syria and the destruction of the Rojava revolution and what the project stands for, for democracy, for freedom, women's liberation. Azadi, Jin, Jia, Azadi, Women, Love, Freedom, Jin, Azadi, Jin, Jia, we are going to open with a short speech by Andrei Grubacic. You can introduce yourself. Thank you. I got speakers. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, it's not easy to speak today, and I will try to be as brief as possible. I just came back from Europe, and in Europe, a journalist asked me, this thing that you are telling me, that Kurds are victims, this? like this. Keep it close to uh... Sir, please. Yeah. No, 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 like this. <laughs> this thing that you're saying yeah. that Kurds are victims, Rojava Kurds are victims, well, it doesn't really make sense, he said. They must have done something. And I responded, yes, of course they have done something. That's the whole point. 
And he said, well, they must be terrorists, because if you read what the Turkish minister said, and the interior minister actually said this, Rojava is a terrorist corridor in the Middle East. And then the same Turkish minister proceeded to say, Rojava is not just a terrorist society. It is a women's terrorist society. And you know what? I told the journalist, yeah, actually you are right. That is absolutely true. And I went to Rojava, and what I have seen there is a democratic revolution that has produced an egalitarian, ecological, democratic society based on liberation of women and liberation of all life. So in that sense, of course, I told the journalist, we are all terrorists. If that is terrorism, I hope really that we are all terrorists. He was somewhat confused. He didn't really like that. And he said, well, what is then the purpose? of Turkey attacking Rojava. Well, the purpose is kind of obvious for anybody who is paying any attention. The idea is to prevent any kind of Kurdish political organization emerging either inside Turkey or outside of Turkey. And that has been an obsession of modern Turkish state from its inception. It begins, the wars of Turkification begins in 1915. And what we have seen in Afrin, what we are seeing now, is just a continuation of a policy of Turkification that goes back for a century. But it's not enough. There is more. It's also a result of statification, of attack of a state against an alternative, democratic alternative to the state. For all the imperfections of Rojava, and there were few, Rojava was a society built on direct democratic practices on environmental sustainability and liberation of women. That is something that scares the states. That is something that undermines the very logic of the state. Rojava was built on something more. It was built on the idea of the democratic nation. The idea of democratic nation means coexistence of multi-ethnic groups without a dominant nation, without a dominant Syrian Arab, Turkish or Iraqi Arab nation. That is threatening. That is something that scares the states. That is something that undermines the very foundation of any nation state. This is why the world of states is right now against Rojava. This is why not only Turkey, but also other states who are deciding the fate of Rojava are against Rojava. And if we are to look for a, for a solution, if we are to look for, and the same journalist actually asked me, okay, but you cannot be that glib. There must be a pragmatic solution to all of this. You have to make some demands. And I said, sure. I mean, we can make a demand. We can say that the world needs to recognize Rojava as a political organization, political recognition of Rojava. We can say that we demand that United Nations comes inside of the so-called safe zone. We can say that we should build in the Kurdish city of Kamishla, that we should build an international tribunal that's going to try Erdogan for war crimes. That's, that, I think, is a very reasonable practical demand. On the other hand, what is the purpose of being practical and reasonable in the world that is run by states, in the world that's run by money? I don't think that we should operate within the logic of nation states. One of the lessons of Rojava has been that we should work outside of that logic. If we count on the so-called outrage, morally outrage, international community to do something, people will die. Kurds will be dis displaced. Uh, Turkey will become even more authoritarian and Rojava will be lost. This is why I think we need to take to the streets. This is why we need to do boycotts. This is why we need to work and operate against and outside the logic of the states. Because if you think about this, if you think about the world right now, you will see that capitalism as a system is in a serious crisis. From Ecuador to Macedonia, yeah. from uh, Lebanon to, to Chile, 
The world is on fire. The nation state as an institution is losing its legitimacy. And we are now, in a certain sense, forced to make a choice. The world is on fire. Do we want a world of states or do we want a world of Rojava? Do we want a world of barbarism of states or do we want a world of freedom of democratic autonomy? Do we want Putin, Erdogan and Trump or do we want an egalitarian, environmentalist society built on liberation of women and liberation of life? Yay! Yeah! The choice is ours. You remember Rojava, beautiful name, has a very nice translation. What it really means is the land where the sun sets. And in many ways, it is really appropriate because the sun will soon set in Rojava, in the Middle East. And it is going to be either the sun of nation states or the sun of freedom and humanity. And it really depends on us. So let's do everything we can to fight the states and to fight with Rojava with everything we have. Because it is not only about the Kurds, it's about all of us. Thank you. Yay! Thank you so much. All right, Richard, thank you for being here. Media! Faster. Uh, good afternoon, my friends. Uh, I'm here to read you a poem by Sherko Bekas, a Kurdish poet. But before I read you the poem, I need to give you a few information that other helps you understand this poem. Uh, the first piece of information is, uh, according to multiple schools of Islam, you have to pray five times a day, and you have to pray in Arabic. And if you pray in any other language, your pray prayer will not be accepted, including if you pray in Kurdish. Uh, whether you agree or disagree with this, this is a fact that you need to understand this poem. The second information uh, that you need to know to understand this poem is about Halabcha. Uh, Halabcha, in 1988, 16, uh, March 16, uh, Saddam Hussein dropped chemical weapons with nerve agents on the city of Halabcha. And in a matter of minutes, the whole city of Halabcha froze to death. Kava Golestan. Kava Golestan, the photojournalist, said, the life froze for the first time in my career. I saw a new type of death. The whole city of Halabcha froze to death. But this is not the information that you need to understand this poem. The information that you need to understand this poem is when Halabcha happened, when Halabcha happened, the United States did not condemn Halabcha. In fact, the United States tried to say that Saddam had nothing to do with it. And even till today, the United States has not officially condemned Halabcha. And that's the fact. Um, so I'm going to read you the poem, uh, which is related to this. After, after the suffocation of Halafcha, I wrote a long complaint letter to God. After the suffocation of Halafcha, I wrote a long complaint letter to God. Before reading it to anyone, I read it for a tree. 
before reading it for anyone, I read it for a tree, and the tree cried. A bird next to me, a bird next to me, who is going to take it for you all the way to God? I cannot fly all the way there. At night, at night, the angel of my poetry came to me, dressed all in black, and said, don't worry, I'll take it for you. I'll fly all the way to the higher skies. But I cannot promise that I can deliver it to God himself. And I said, yes, please, fly. The angel of my poetry flew with my letter and came back, and came back next day with the same letter. There was a response by a guy named Obaid. There was a response by a guy named Obaid, an intern at the secretary office of God. It was written in Arabic. You fool, nobody speaks Kurdish here and you will not forward your letter to God. My friends, my friends, Today, the history is about to repeat itself. When the United Nations Security Council wanted to condemn Turkey for its war on the Kurds, it was the United States that vetoed Always. the resolution. My friends, James Jeffrey, the secretary uh, in, in Syria, he, he blocked the condemnation of killing Havrin Khalaf, even though, though he knew about it, he blocked State Department from condemning the Turkish war crimes. So I'm here today with this poem to say you're not going to let the history repeat itself. You're going to keep the memory of Havrin Khalaf alive. Thank you. Thank you. Ready? Hello, everybody. I'm a scholar. I'm an academic from Turkey. Uh, I'm a person of Turkish descent. And I'm here. I end up here in this country after many years as a result of uh, saying no to war. It was several years ago. It was 2015, 16, when we, see, we saw this coming. When the peace process in Turkey between the Kurds and the Turkish state broke down, we saw this coming. We tried to stop it there when it was starting. It was 2015, 2016, when Erdogan tried the same thing, displacement, massacres within Turkey. He shelled the cities within Turkey, but people did not pay attention to Turkey at the time. People were complicit all around the world. We cried, we, we yelled, we, we shouted. We said, in Turkey, within Turkey, within the sovereign government of Turkey's Kurdish majority lands, houses were shelled, civilians were killed. In Jizre basements, hundreds of people were burned alive. It was 2016 February. You can see all the records about that. You can see all the young efforts about that. No one said anything about that. People did not pay attention around the world. And that's why we had this coming. We said no to war. As academics, more than 1,100 people, academics, we signed a petition to say no to this war. We lost our jobs. We were sent to exile. And most of us are now like living close to civil death. However, we did not stop saying no to war. As you can see, as you have seen so far uh, over the last few weeks, uh, this war has been going on and the numbers of displaced people are anywhere between 160,000 to 300,000. These people are now living as a refugee for no other reason than Erdogan wanting to extend his own power. This is not even his game. He doesn't even care whether Kurds are living here or there or whether they have their rights or not. He doesn't care. He's just complying with the wishes 
of the Turkish state that killed Armenians a hundred years ago, that committed genocide a hundred years ago. We have the same, very same state that killed Armenians, that eradicated Greeks from the from the current day Turkey. It is the same state that is doing what it is doing now. So you can see the very same people who survived the genocide one century ago. That genocidal army found them now in Syria after they fled, after their ancestors fled a hundred years ago. People were complicit back then as well. After all, Hitler said, no one talks about the annihilation of Armenians. This is what Hitler said as the pretext of the Holocaust. It is because people did not act, people did not care when it happened. When in the 1920s people didn't care, when after Turk at the time committed the genocide again against the Kurds after the Shay Sayyid rebellion and eradicated many villages, many thousand villages. People did not care again uh, when this time Saddam Hussein committed Enfal genocide and formed the Arab belt there. Then Hafez Asad, asset, the same Syrian uh, Ba'ath dictator, he also did that. People did not care much. It is what brought us today to this point. Over the last few weeks, not just uh, the Kurdish people in Kurdistan, in Rojava, not just those, the people who wanted to say no to war within Turkey, just like we did a few years ago, they have been persecuted. Nurcan Baysal, a human rights lawyer in Diyarbakir, her home was raided by 30 plus armed men in the presence of her kids, and she was taken into custody. And right now, hundreds of people uh, right now, the number is around 800 people who said no to war. If you spell the word war, Rojova, occupation, massacre, then you are taken in by the police now in Turkey. You can't even say war about this thing. You can't spell the name massacre about this thing. That is why people can't be vocal enough. It is not because within Turkey we don't have an anti-war movement. We have an anti-war movement. But it is what is going on now. We have been saying no to war. We have been saying also as academics, boycott Turkey. Several people have been complicit in what is going on around here uh, in, in, in the US academia. They don't refrain from going to Turkey for those fancy trips to Turkey. They don't refrain from having all sorts of uh, dirty relationships with the Turkish government. People must boycott Turkey, they should not go to Turkey for their touristic purposes. It is, should be over now. And I want to call out on Ilhan Omar. She came out as defending all the progressive causes. And we saw of all the three, all the three votes about Turkey, she voted in favor of Erdogan. She did not want to say no to Erdogan. We have to call out on her. We have to Tell her to stop, to change her ways. Stop defending Erdogan. Stop supporting Erdogan's cause. We know, we know who is funding, who Erdogan is funding in the U.S. Some so-called civil rights organizations who are only acting for Muslim interests. It is good. We we all want to have those coalitions, but they should not. They should not defend Erdogan. They should not support Erdogan. And we should be careful over here. Who we are aligning with. Some people are just Erdogan's puppets. They are using, taking on all those progressive causes. They are not. So, what I want to say, uh, as an academic who ended up here, we will, we will, uh, as a worldwide Turkish academic community who have been supporting the Kurdish cause, the liberation of Kurds in Rojava, in Turkish Kurdistan, in Iranian Mahabad and elsewhere in Iraqi Kurdistan. We will not stop talking until Turkey stops these genocidal ways. We have to stop Erdogan, and you can see Erdogan, Putin, and Trump, they're all in this con game. Right. You can see how it worked out all these three weeks. Right. How step by step, they just handed Syria 
They handed Rojova, they took it from the Kurds, and they handed it over to Putin all together. And they made this show, and we, were, we just watched. We should not watch. We should take action. We should say no to this war. We should say uh, no fly zone. The only thing the US could have done would be to declare no fly zone. And it didn't. Who are they kidding? And they're showing that all those oil fields are much more important than the human beings there. And they're now saying that to the whole world. And just like Trump says, oil is more important than the lives of those people. Uh. And this is happening as we speak. They are now protecting the oil fields in Syria, but not the Kurds. And Kurds are being attacked now. All these war crimes are happening now as we speak. Thank you all for coming and uh, we should stop, uh, we should stop Turkey. We should stop Turkey, that's, that's it. We should stop Erdogan. We should stop Trump only if we can stop Turkey. Thank you. Um, thank you everyone for sharing your solidarity today. Um, we appreciate all of you here. Um, I am a representative of uh, Central Committee of Eastern Kurdistan, and we do have a speech. Um, sorry, my voice is not really good. And I ask uh, Dilan Khanaga to please uh, give the speech on our behalf. And uh, after this, we would uh, do the march. Um, really quickly, just some notes. Uh, for those who are taking photos, be you press, be you individuals, before you take a photo of someone's face, if it is not covered, ask for permission. Always. If you're going to take wide angle shots of people and post them online, blur faces if you don't have their consent. Um, and if there is conflict, de-escalate, please. Cameras are expensive. Uh, we will begin our march in a second. I'm going to read a statement on behalf of Nawandi uh, Natawai Rosalati Kurdistan. Um, and as we march, we will have a few more speeches. We will make stops along the way. Thank you all so much for being here and for listening to all these speeches. I'm not gonna go to the march. In the name of the freedom-loving and innocent people of the world, in the name of the harmless animals, in the name of the innocent whose land is pillaged by the blood-sucking creatures calling themselves humans, capitalism. Today is November 2nd, and I am speaking before you in the city of Oakland. We Kurds are brothers from the same parents. Our heritage goes back to the era of the Medes and the Sassanids. In the international community, we are called the Kurds. We have existed on this earth for the past 12,000 years. We are the first people who recognize the equality of women. And for that reason, our representatives are Anahita and Shah Banu. Our historical capital is the city of Hangmatana. Many years ago, our land was invaded, has been invaded many, many times. Most recently, um, and by recently I mean over 100 years ago, our land was divided into four different states, and the Kurds have suffered under the violence of the nation state ever since then. The states of Iran, Iraq, Turkey, and Syria. Five years ago, in 2014, ISIS again invaded Kobani and took our women and children as hostages. They established an Islamic caliphate called the Dawl al-Islamiyya fil Iraq wa Sham. And this year, with the support of the Turkish state, they and other affiliated groups have invaded us again. Our Kurdistan is divided into four brother states, sister states, yani. After the First World War, our homes in Iran, Turkey, Iraq, and Syria were torn apart. Our historical artifacts, precious artwork, and statues were looted and transferred to other countries' museums. Who permitted them to pillage the heritage of the Kurds and sell them? Which international law sanctioned the sale of these precious national treasures to foreigners? All of these sellers and buyers must meet their punishments. And a question I pose to the world and to you all here today, why is it that there is no significant media coverage of Kurdish areas in the Middle East, of the ongoing oppression of the Kurds by the nation states that occupy their land? 
How can you tolerate such humanities against such helpless yet proud people? Why is it that there is never any response to the multiple letters of Nawendi Natawai Rojawati Kurdistan of protest regarding the inequity of justice with respect to the people of Kurdistan? We Kurds have lost thousands of our best to the independence and freedoms of many countries in the area and have suffered thousands of wounded compatriots and comrades and we are still not recognized as a nation. We are still not recognized as human beings. It was the Kurds who identified the hiding place of Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, and informed U.S. forces for the elimination of this terrorist. It was Kurds for the entire period of the recent war have kept ISIS at bay and kept them in their prisons. Trump has unjustly taken credit for the military actions of the Kurds and allied forces in the SDF against Daesh. Uh, the U.S. House of Representatives recently recognized the genocide of the Armenians in 1915. Finally, they do something right. My question is, this happened over a hundred years later. How long will we have to wait for the current genocidal campaign against the Kurds to be recognized? I really hope it's not a hundred years. Why is it that the UN does not have live reports in the Kurdish regions of Iran, Iraq, Turkey, and Syria to report on the realities of the human slaughters of the Kurds to the world? Why is it that when Kurds go to the UN to discuss their peace plan for the Middle East, to discuss Rojava and the alternatives that it poses, the alternative model that it poses for coexistence among different groups in the Middle East, that they are met with empty rooms and no audience? Why is it that our peaceful approaches for international coexistence are never even acknowledged or considered? Why is it that the League of Nations after World War I, without the consent or presence of the Kurds, divided all of them into different countries on a whim? Actually, the, the reasons for that are very clear, nationalism and oil. Why is it that there are murderous nations like Iran, Iraq, Turkey, Syria, and even the US are granted a seat in the UN and the Kurds have no voice. We Kurds have sacrificed many lives in the human struggle for freedom and independence. In the struggle against Daesh in the past couple of years, we had 11,000 martyrs and over 20,000 injured. And we are still not afforded basic human rights. Why is it that various television networks in the world do not broadcast the news about the history of our lives, the massacres of the Kurds, and our political and cultural happenings. To remain silent about genocide is a crime itself. To remain silent about genocide is a crime itself. <laughs> Silence is complicity. Are these networks responsible for their silence? Will they be held accountable for their silence? when Turkey continues with its genocidal campaign against the Kurds and the Assyrians and Armenians and Yazidis and Arabs of northern Syria. The only country that recognizes the Kurds as a nation is Armenia also. And we thank our Armenian brothers and comrades for their support and international solidarity. They have turned up in great numbers. We Kurds are the survivors of one of the oldest faiths in the world. But the UN has not yet given us a chance to establish this human loving faith. Why is it that the Kurds must remain enslaved to the policies of hostile majority governments and nation states? Why is it that no country is willing to accept and grant civil, religious, and sociocultural rights to Kurds? Is it because we are Kurds? Is it because our identity threatens the hegemony of the nation state? Are all the microphones present here open to receive and broadcast the call of the Kurdish people for independence and autonomy? The Kurds had no option but to point out the hideout of Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, contingent upon a no-fly order for all the Kurdish cities of the area. The ceasefire that was reached on October 17th that was not adhered to by the Turkish state resulted in many casualties of Kurds, particularly medics and journalists. And this is not being coverage, nor is it being acknowledged. Trump still maintains that the ceasefire was upheld by Turkey. The Kurds, 
generally try and do not wish to take advantage of uh, political situations for their own uh, advantages, like our uh, beloved 45. Yet we expect to be recognized as a committed uh, ally and, and people who have cooperated in the fight against Daesh, ISIS. And we seek political and military protection against imminent onslaught by the Turkish army, which is not even afforded or acknowledged. We, the Kurds, have extended the same respect to others for thousands of years, and we continue to uphold the same humanitarian and civilized stance with respect to the rest of the world. The world should know that the aspirations of the Kurdish people for an independent nation will never subside until every last Kurd is dead. We Kurds maintain the belief that in return for our solid and undivided respect for human rights, we should be granted equal courtesy. We expect the international body to recognize the voice of the Kurdish people for justice and recognize our rights in Iran, Iraq, Turkey, and Syria and acknowledge our membership and representation at the UN. The Kurds demand representation at the UN talks about the fate of Syria and Geneva next week. And we will not be silent until we get it. We are Rojava! Rojava is us! 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 Thank you all. Next up, we have Berfin, who will give a short speech and will begin a song. And with the song, we will mobilize and begin our march. Thank you. I wrote this speech in two minutes, so I'm sorry. Can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah. No, 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 wait. Can you literally hear me? Or am I just made a little bit of noise? Or, oh, it's that girl with the good voice. Or am I just made a few you guys like to listen to and see on social media or even in real life? We get so focused on current news, but only momentarily, for a few seconds, minutes, that once we start to scroll down, we totally forget about what we were focused on, my voice. And now, because many of you may be on social media, you focus on that new pair of jean ad that you just seen. Your emotions are not completely destroyed. You were crying over my voice as a Kurdish Zazaki woman, but now you're so focused on those new genes that you probably even forgot what my first sentence was. You're feeding your emotions to capitalism, because that's what we have been fed at such a young age, to fight amongst ourselves, to continue our true identity, because the strongest fight we go through daily is against assimilation. So not only are we in the struggle of survival to let our culture live in the U.S., but to actually live. The president of Turkey stated that he wanted to clear the border of terrorists in northeast Syria, or let's say it's righteous name, Kurdistan, to build a 30-kilometer safe zone. But by terrorists, he means the Kurdish forces of YPG and YPJ, the only revolutionary guerrilla force in the world to fight against the actual terrorists, ISIS. But I guess the president of Turkey is also focused on those pair of genes that he's forgotten the truth. He knows that he's dying. In 1938, my village, Dasin, faced the most hardcore genocide in Turkey, along with the Armenians. They buried us on top of each other, not a single person having their own grave. And damn near 100 years later, the same thing is happening, and the world is quiet. Is it not westernized enough for you, or are you just waiting for us to become a part of history? My friend who passed away in Sarah Khanil, his funeral was not allowed to go back to us, to go back to his family. So tell me. What's changed? Close down your capitalism if you have to. Understand that you've only been given a small amount of freedom and you're so focused on that that, you, that they're actually taking away the actual purpose of freedom. They're blinding you. Do something, anything. Organize with us, march with us, stand with us. Humanity is dying, but they will never kill the blood of the mountain freedom fighters in every single one of us. 
right. Um, I've been singing since I was six, especially in college. And I was like, <clears throat> because I feel like music is the only thing that I can repress and suppress. So I'm going to be singing a song um, from 1938 that's some genocide and it talks about how they buried us and talk about each other. Um, then we can start marching. Well, right. Ready to, right? Switch off mics and we're ready to move here. I'm not going to go into March. So now there you have it. Uh, that's pretty much the, uh, in a nutshell, that genocide is being committed against the Kurds. And uh, what, what can you do to stop it? Uh, quit boycotting, boycott Turkish products. If you have any travel plans, um, uh, Istanbul is actually a very, uh, not Istanbul, um, yeah, Istanbul is a very popular tourist destination. Uh, plan your trips elsewhere. Uh, God dang, there's just so much. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. I love all my Facebook brothers and sisters. So have a wonderful day. And we'll let the music in the background. Clark Priest, Freeman Sullivan, signing off. Everybody have a great day.